Now, so when I was there, you know, a year ago, the plant was just, uh, I think, a lot of testing going on, and there were a fair number of people there, but uh, but there's not any more, is there? Talk about, can you talk a little bit about the, the plant and um, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, it's normal. In the commissioning, you have a lot of contractors and, and yeah. all those people there, but yeah. the plant has been, uh, it's been designed to have a minimum amount of human intervention in it. So it's been controlled with softwares and, and technically uh, we only have three persons per shift active at, in the plant. So, uh, so only one is watching the process in on the monitors. We also have all these things on the tablet so you can actually be at your home and, and still control the process of manufacturing. Um, this is a very, it's, the idea behind this is a module for us that enables us to build uh, more lines and just copy paste them. So it's, it's fully automated. Um, this gives us the flexibility in terms of labor. We can technically put it anywhere in the world because it just doesn't need so many people to be involved in it. And, and yeah, today you don't see much people inside. You actually can, we actually can produce without the light. We can, with the lights off. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So, so it's easy to replicate elsewhere. Yeah. Are you gonna build a graphene plant? So you announced a US um, acquisition. Are you gonna build a, a graphene plant there? Is that kind of the, the plan? You gotta, you gotta look into the concept of that. The thing is, um, these are fluffy powders. So shipping costs is, is like double the cost of the graphite when you ship them. That means uh, it's preferred not to be far away from the customers because customers are paying for shipping and they don't really like to pay for shipping. That's, uh, that said, um, you know, the place of future plants, let's say in US, uh, has a direct relationship of where the customer is and where a customer can actually ship it. So that's why North Carolina looks to be a great place for us, uh, uh, based on what we're seeing from um, the the customers around that area. Uh, so so yeah, I mean that we have a good land and large land, and we can actually expand the building if we need it there and, and put new new graphene facilities there. Right? Are you are you good? do you plan to list in the U.S.? Any um, any thoughts on that? So we have, we okay. Better to say we are considering technically all the options. I mean, um, I don't want to make the same story of I still think we are undervalued and you know U.S. and everything like that. The reality is um, we uh, we appreciate having higher exposures to um, state U.S. investors, right? Um, one of the ways to do it is to um, is to be double listed. Uh, anything is decided today, no, uh, but I can say we are you no know, seriously considering all the options. Okay. And I guess finally, what, what do you see as the main sort of catalysts for, uh, for this year, Saroosh? Uh, of course, the commercial strength is something that everyone is, is looking to see and, uh, and uh, more interest from the, from larger companies now. Uh, we will slowly announce some of those when they are getting to a bit more uh, advanced in the in the development cycle. Um, I can tell you that we are working with a lot of people and a lot of big, big, big names. So um, doesn't mean we're going to start just naming them and announcing them if uh, we haven't received a purchase appeal from them, right? Of so, course, yeah. Um, so uh, our target is to announce. POs and also POs when they are very close to the manufacturer. Purchase, purchase orders, right? Purchase orders, yes. Yeah. So our business looks like we are receiving blanket purchase orders over and over. So, you know, when you are the first one in the world, you know, you just don't know even how customers are paying you. So it looks like in the graphene world, people are very comfortable are providing blanket purchase orders. It's not the same case for other material. This is, this is happening in the graphene this way. Um, and blanket purchase orders uh, means um, there are clear definition of the product and the pricing in there and the forecast in terms of deliveries. But these are not like a mining offtake take or pay contracts. It's, it's not the way it's working in, in the graphene. Um, customers is going through a long term development cycle of two to three years. And then when they're at the point to buy the product, they send you a blanket purchase order and there are clear forecasts of when and how much product should be delivered to which plant of the customer. 
So this is what we are receiving and we will announce those things within the 2021 as much we get closer to the production because some of the blanket purchase orders are like a year away. So we're getting, we'll probably wait to get closer to the dates of production to make sure that when we announce something, it's just 100% bulletproof. You just don't want to announce everything. So right. this is one. Uh, of course, um, we'll, uh, we're, we're in the middle of a financing round now, uh, as, as you're aware. So uh, this can support us uh, for developing more and more of the battery activities. So this is something that probably uh, we'll hear more in 2021 and they will share with the market how is our progress. So you can maybe accelerate the time timeline that you probably Every, really everyone wants to accelerate the timeline. Yeah. It is like everyone loves batteries, right? Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, we, we have to look into um, what is the best return for our business in the period of time that we're considering, right? So batteries is, is definitely something that's of interest, but you got to consider battery revenue and profits is still far away from us. It's not like in 2021, we get, we get cash and revenue from that. Right. So right. we will, we will be smart about those type of activities. At the same time, we believe that uh, a growth company should not have debt or have minimum debt. So uh, also another portion of our use of proceeds is to slowly reduce our debt load. We don't have too much debt. All our debt are contract backed, so it's not like a sub debt or anything. Though uh, we, we, need to, we need to be cognizant about those penalties if we, if we paid before the maturity, but you know, we'll be smart about how to reduce those debts in the 2021. And uh, the, the interest rates out there are very low. So some of those debts that has been taken before, they're higher interest rates. So we just don't want to pay those things. So we're, we're going to optimize and, and make our balance it a bit cleaner than it is. So this is the type of things that you will hear from us. So I think like you're a quite a large company, like you have what, over 400 employees, right? Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about uh, sort of revenues in the last financial period and um, is profitability like an important uh priority for you or will it be plowing it revenues back into r d for a while and listen profitability is always important okay so just, just don't get me wrong when i say well profitability is not the, the focus of the company it is not it's a business so the business it should make money right that's yeah. that's the, the business one uh though um the one thing also um your audience should consider that uh, that for growth you need fuel and fuel means you have to invest in R&D. And as much you invest more in the R&D, you have a better growth. But if you just invest too much on the R&D in the short term, you don't have enough money and you die, right? So this is the combination of uh, how much money and where we have to invest. Um, we, we have, we, we're doing between 60 to 80 million of sales and, and, and we hope to, to get more and more of the sales per year from, from our graphene activity and, and the new facilities. Um, so the concept is, um, R and D supporting sales, also R and D is developing growth and future, you know, um, added value for us. Like all the battery things that R and D is doing, these are uh, they require a lot of investment. Now we have been including this financing about 120 million dollars we raise in the in the business. We have, um, you know, a, a, after this financing, a big chunk of it will be in our bank account, and and we really created. Um, three to four dollars per every dollars that we raised in this business. Mm -hmm. so I guess the return has been good so far, but we want to make sure we continue this. Like it's not going to be just raising too much money because, uh, you know, we can or or not raising because we don't want dilution, but then we don't have money to invest in art. It's all about the balance of, of how much we're raising, when we're raising, and are we able to create enough value to justify every dollar that's coming in, right? Um, now we don't really need financing, financing or capital to support our cash flow. That's that's not the case. Like we invest couple couple a few millions per year, um, you know, between three to five million of R and D per year. Um, if we want to get the batteries growing, we have to increase the investment on those battery activities, definitely. Um, but but the reality is, you know, this is a big chunk. Maybe it's like half of our yearly burn per year. So. So we always can adjust it based on uh, the market condition, business conditions and so far. But, uh, but to us, um, we don't wanna sacrifice the growth uh, for short-term profitability. That's, that's something that we are, we're really trying to do. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
one of the things I've sort of grappled with is like how you're kind of a unique company, uh, like in a, in a new space. So like how, uh, how does an investor value or how can, like, what are, what are, can you give any sort of metrics or, or comparables? Um, so I will change my hat and put my shareholder hat here. The way I look at this business as a shareholder is um, how, how this, how much of the future, let's say energy storage market for, for, for the sake of argument, nano explore can get and how this market gonna grow. So on a, on a very fast growing market, there is a company called Nano Explorer that they have, they're thinking of getting a, a, a small chunk of that market. Even though it's small, but it's gonna be a, a large number, an absolute number. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, this gives me the confidence to value the company on the potential rather than today. Because if we're not a bank, so you're not gonna be able to value us on a multiple of EBITDA. And I guess, if, the, if people were valuing uh, Tesla on the multiple of EBITDA, uh, it never becomes Tesla, right? Um, but the reality is um, Tesla, it's more of an umbrella company for EV. And, and we see ourselves as more of an umbrella company for graphene, not for EVs. Though there are applications for EVs that, right. that, that we can benefit and, and grow, but, but we, we have really done a great job on the graphene space and we, we have, we have, we're pretty much leading this market. Hard to claim those things. We are the largest graphene producer. That's what I can claim and stand behind. But really technologically in terms of uh, commercial growth, in terms of certification standards, everything, we are, we're pretty much the number one. So this market can actually grow a lot. So uh, to value Nano, I think shareholders need to look into how big this graphene market could be and how much of that graphene market Nano Explore can get. Then, uh, then the numbers will be extremely different, right? And and so you, you know, obviously, your shareholder after the financing, how what, what kind of percentage of of the company will you own? Myself. Mm -hmm. So I would own, I guess, seven eight percent of the business. You know, right. um, coming down from the hundred percent of the first day, but uh, <laughs> that was your valuation too at that time. Uh, so I would say about seven eight percent. Uh, it's 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 what as a shareholder really I have in this business. Yeah. But this is really for me personally. Nano is is, is more than the financial return for myself. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's we're doing something which is valuable. And I know it's cliche, and everyone said you know it's always good to be a good corporate citizen and create value. But sometimes some people, including myself, we actually believe those things. So yeah. <laughs> uh, in this case, I I really want to to see graphene in used in, in everywhere in the world in different applications and bring it, it, it will be very helpful for, for, for our next generations. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Great. It was, it was good to you. chat with you, Sarush. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. Take care.